Monica Jordan, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to chat with you. This is a powerful and terrifying film in in so many ways. Um, can can you talk about the genesis of this particular project? What I know that uh, you know what what brought this to life. Um, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, and we're really happy you like the film. So I met Jordan when he had already been filming, so he can talk about that part. But I met Jordan through a common friend who's a reporter. I've been a reporter too and on air for most of my life. And then I, you know, wanted to become a filmmaker, was introduced to Jordan and thought his story was so amazing and incredible. I literally met him and I think I was in Afghanistan like two or three weeks after that. Um, that's, you know, how I, I really thought, because it was just extraordinary to explore so many things and, you know, through him. And it was such a, we connected really well and his personal background was so interesting, but also what, you know, the access that he had, the intimacy he, he was, he had acquired with the Taliban filming for the New York Times, the kind of behind the scenes that for me as a conflict reporter was fascinating, you know, what we sacrifice in our personal lives while we're in the field. So it was a, a combination of things that I was just like, I, I can't let this go. This is a really important story. When we first, um, like, because uh, I had started filming like the initial injection and a little bit of life around that time um, because, you know, I just thought as a filmmaker, maybe it could be an interesting story, but I definitely grappled with being worried that I was a narcissist. Because, like, as a filmmaker, it's kind of weird to think that your own story might make a good film. But I'm kind of glad that I did because we ended up making a, a film. But it is a, it's a little bit embarrassing. It, it, it definitely took some convincing, really, like, a lot. But it was, really? you know, I think it, yeah, because, I th and I think it was a great collaboration. You know, I am a journalist and I wasn't interested in a vanity project either. And I think Jordan wasn't. So that was a great, you know, we had, like, kind of different roles in the code you know I had a different look that was more journalistic and observation and he was like okay if you can sort of focus on that and take care of that I'm not a narcissist and I was like no of course yeah fair enough like this is a, like this is how it should be but you know this is I'm glad you say that because this is not that type of film this is not any anything like that in fact this film speaks to so many different on so many different levels i think and i think jordan your story is an important one to tell but it, the 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 visuals we come back with here just being amidst the the taliban are they're things we don't see or if we do see they're what other people tell us they are if that makes any sense so it's like oh let's watch a movie an action film and oh here's the taliban but this is yeah. real life. Um, and, and there are so many things at, at play uh, in this particular film. I, let, I mean, let's, let's, and I mean, there's so many things I want to talk about with this, but, but let's talk about that with your experience in the Taliban as well, because what, what was that like for you, Jordan, stepping into that world and, and seeing it firsthand? I know that you, you've had experience uh, in the Middle East before, certainly, but in this particular, what, what is it like being in that world? Um, you know, like I lived, uh, by the time Teddy and I were embedded with that Taliban unit, I'd been living in Afghanistan for five years, excuse me. <clears throat> I'd been living in Afghanistan for five years and I'd filmed with a lot of people who had done really horrible things. And one thing that I, and a lot of people who'd done extremely amazing things. And what I came to realize over time was that these people who were really extraordinarily amazing and really awful were really also just ordinary people. They weren't like monsters and heroes. They were just ordinary people like brothers and fathers and students and, you know, teachers and, and mullahs and whatnot. And I kind of started to think that, um, so all of these people that I have understood to be monsters are also just going to be ordinary people. And when that kind of clicked um, some years ago, 
then I, I became far less intimidated when I had to, to front up to these kinds of people because I understood that, yeah, they were ordinary people. It kind of reminds me of something that my dad said to me ages ago when I was a kid. He was like, no matter how successful someone is or no matter how brilliant or smart or rich or scary somebody is, like no need to be intimidated because everybody's fighting their own personal battle of some sort. Like everybody has a vulnerability. And so I think also just remembering that, you know, even the Talibs have vulnerabilities and they have their own personal battles that they're fighting. And it kind of just like makes it so much easier to connect with everybody. Mm. Yeah. And I think like what's what was really interesting between me and Jordan, I mean, Jordan for me was like living a little bit like vicar I was living vicariously through him. Like we yeah. shared all these things as being journalists. I didn't have access to any of that because I'm a woman to any of that world that he was reporting on. But we we just shared all these things in common. Like how does it feel, you know, to really gain access to really understand someone? You kind of have to deconstruct all these notions you have of, you know, a person, a group, are they a terrorist organization, whatever, whatever. But you know, like he said, you have to kind of deconstruct and connect on a basic level and make yourself likable to them and you know hopefully they'll open up and that's how we gain access so we had like the mo of being a journalist or getting access to film meaningfully i think you know we shared we shared that in common and we had great discussions about that whole behind the scenes process that became the film that was so much more interesting than the new york times film that also exists and lives separately you know what he was kind of reporting on yeah, absolutely. And, and it's interesting about the deconstructive because we're fed a narrative mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't justify or any take anything away from the horrifying acts that have taken place. But, but you know, if I'm hearing, you know, you correct, Jordan, you're saying that they they have their their own lives as well. Like you said, they're taking care of their kids. So it's very interesting that and we and we would need to deconstruct that. But uh, one, one of the things that comes up in the film, though, in, in that spirit I, I, there's one of forgive me i can't remember who makes the comment but somebody meant mentions the fact that this generation came of age with freedom and it was robbed of it overnight that's definitely a kiana hayeti quote yeah that was <laughs> kiana exactly okay so can we talk about that a little bit then i, I was interested in that because is there a generational struggle going on here within this world I mean, Kiana made that comment when she was speaking about young Afghan women, right? Because, yes. you know, like young Afghan women who, particularly those who were living in cities around the country, were were getting access to education and university and they were speaking English and they were getting scholarships to go overseas. And, you know, even on a more kind of like um, more broad level for, for women all around the country, they had so much more personal freedom and, and independence under the Republic government, but then obviously the Taliban have reversed all the freedoms that they have. So these, the, the people who were born after the Taliban lost control last time um, have never experienced living under a regime. I mean, yeah. Afghanistan has never been paradise. It wasn't paradise before the Taliban took over. It was still extremely restrictive for women and girls, but it's just now looking back because now it's so medieval and, you know, even before the Middle Ages kind of thinking, it seems like life under the Republic was better, which it was better than it is now, but it still wasn't paradise back then. But yeah, she was talking about Afghan women and girls when she made that comment. Yes. But I think, Steve, something really interesting that you pointed out, and I think that was for me a really interesting idea it's it's america's longest war right afghanistan and i think there has been a generational shift as well when you see young men who don't know who osama bin laden was yeah i mean you really wonder like you know and it really kind of for us it was just so out there this is the absurdity of war of the longest war that the u.s has engaged in um that was you know a dismal failure how the whole leaving you know and just kind of the taliban taking over the whole country um unfolded so uh there is definitely a generational divide there as well mm. there, it's interesting there is that moment in the conversation where where jordan you're sitting in that group and you know i i don't know who i don't know who osama bin laden is it's like what um it, it's a fascinating fascinating moment that in within the film 
It's oh. also reflective. It's also, it's not only an age thing that he he doesn't know because, you know, Afghanistan, it's very tribal, right? And those tribals are often quite disparate. So they, that entire tribe in that area really may not have much information about Osama bin Laden and may not understand why the US came. They just know that they were there were infidels invading their homeland and it was their jihadic responsibility to, I don't know if that's a word, I just made that up, jihadic responsibility, whatever that means. It's, um, a, good, it's a good it's word, a, though. It's a good, a good descriptive good word. Descriptive word. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good description. You get on board with that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, to, to defend their homeland. Yeah. And to Jordan, you know, let's talk about your experience here too because so much of this film is each moment feels pregnant with tension. Like even the scene where, you know, that they're, they're challenging you to wrestle and you, you sort of, it, it's, it's a terrifying film. What, what was that experience like for you being there and, and hiding this, this key part of who you are? Yeah. Um, you know, like Eastern men are very affectionate with each other. Mm. Um, the West wrongly looks at it through a Western gaze and assumes it's homoerotic, but okay, sometimes of course it is, but like most of the time it's not homoerotic at all. They are just very physical and intimate with each other. And, you know, Teddy and I had been embedded in that village with that unit for like four or five months before the scenes that you saw in this film. So we'd really built up our, our relationship with them. But for that entire five months, I really tried to keep a physical distance between me and all of the, the Talibs. Um, a, because obviously I didn't want to get touched anywhere by accident. And then, you know, questions start being asked, yeah. but also out of respect for their beliefs as well. Mm. Um, many of which we absolutely hate, but you know, my job as a filmmaker is to be as respectful to the characters of my film as I can be, even if I hate them. It's my like ethical professional responsibility. Um, but then that wrestling scene is really one of the first times that that physical distance between us was broken. Mm. And my like, I was like, you know, I'm smiling. Oh God, this is going to go so wrong. And then I make that joke about my lady balls and I uh, get, yeah, but you know, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm humoring my way through it because, you know, A, I don't want them to kind of feel like, oh, why are you being so weird? What have you got to hide? And also like, you don't want to offend people when you're in their own home, right? right? Like, yeah, it was a really, really, the whole thing was extremely tricky. And it's not only the physical stuff that was really dangerous and confusing, but also like the mental, the mental gauntlet that we were constantly running there. Well, I, I can say this in all honesty. I don't, it, it's very rare that I have feared so much for the main character of any film as I did watching this, watching you go through this. Cause I did, I mean, this, you know, you talk about how if they found out you could be killed. Yeah. Um, and, and there's one comment again is made where it says, I just want to be seen like I feel. I, I love that line in the film and I feel like it's it's so important, so central to the film. And I thought, I wondered for you both, the why, what about that is so important to be able to say that you can be seen how you feel? Um, I think it's, um, it's one of my favorite parts and uh, I'm so happy that you highlight that line and that I think that scene also, because in that scene, I remember something very striking about it is that Jordan does say, my stress level is up to here. And he's usually pretty good with stress levels, but I think it was taking a toll a little bit to your point, your question, you know, just being in proximity with these men, you can block it on a lot of things, but it does take a toll internally. I just think it's, it's a beautiful notion that we can we should all have the freedom to be and to be seen and feel, you know, how we are. And I think um, that's something very much that the film explores, not only in a transitioning context, but, you know, in a more universal context. I mean, do we feel good about ourselves in our skins? You know, there's so much like awkwardness and things that society kind of puts on you. And for us, that was a real 
beautiful thing that he could be liberated, but very bittersweet too, because as he was liberated, this country is being plunged, yeah. um, you know, spiraling out of control and people's rights are being deprived at the same time. So they're losing freedom. Yeah. And you know, it was like it's an absolute head fuck because it was so awesome. Like in a way I didn't transition in a way I just became a man overnight because, you know, I'd started my hormone therapy like four or five months before the Taliban took over. And, you know, as you can see in the film, I barely even started sprouting any facial hair or anything. And they just accepted me as a man. Right. I mean, what a mm -hmm. gift for a trans person to just like overnight be accepted um, as the, the, the gender that you feel, but it was also so confusing and unfair because like of all places, it was in this bloody Taliban village with this bloody oppressive regime that I was experiencing that, like, that's just so hard. Even now I find it really hard to, to get my head around. Yeah. For women, especially like, it's just been such a heartbreaking. Yeah, it's like, as I was like willingly leaving my womanhood, Afghan women were forcibly being erased. Right. And there's like one of the most interesting and you know, difficult aspects of the film is the 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 question of and the commentary on privilege, you know, like it's so unfair in many ways that here is this white person going and transitioning in this place like where it's near impossible for an Afghan to do it. Um, yeah, but I think, yeah. See, and this is what I mean. The film, the film is so essential on so many levels with different conversations. Like there's so many different discussions to be had coming out of this film uh we're running out of time i want to be sensitive to your time to you both but what do you hope people take away from transition um for me very personally because i'm a reporter just that people appreciate and understand a little bit more of the profession of going to you know dangerous areas and sacrificing so much personally when so much is at stake but still having kind of a duty to you know film and bring stories about different corners of the world that is just harder and harder to kind of bank on but i think that was for me really important i think for me two things one that um we shouldn't assume to understand or know people or places there's so much more going on that we don't know about and we shouldn't be too quick to judge and that people realize that Afghanistan is so amazing it's such a fucking fantastic country and it's a country that really is worth fighting for and we shouldn't uh, forget about that amazing place well I am so appreciative of you both thank you so much for your time thank uh, you so much I'm, I'm so great. Okay. Great. thank you <laughs> Wonderful you know, talk. you like, we've, we've done heaps and heaps of interviews, right? But you actually raised two points that I don't think anyone else has raised before. That's really very impressive. Well done. Oh, good. I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good job. <laughs> Thanks Thank so much. You. Have a great day.